Hey everybody, I'm Flint Gage and I am very excited because I am here with the director of The Witch and The Lighthouse and the upcoming The Northman, which comes out in April, which I'm also very excited about. Robert Eggers is here. Robert, how you doing, man? Not bad. Uh, glad, glad to be here. The first thing that strikes me about the, the film and looking at the trailer is just the scale of it. Your other films, The Witch and The Lighthouse, were both very contained, just a few locations. Um, so my first question is, how was it working on a film of this scope? It was very enjoyable um, uh, to get out of uh, such a confined space it's a viking revenge saga and it, it is literally an epic uh that's what it is um and i think maybe doing something in between two guys in a lighthouse and a epic viking movie might have been a better plan we made three villages and multiple viking ships and i'm sure i could give you uh, a chain mail count that would be horrifying which brings us to a couple of fan questions that we got from uh ign users on our message boards uh first one is how important do you think historical accuracy is to filming events from the past well it's not important to filmmaking at all really and uh and you can make a great period story without being accurate you know coppola's Dracula is one of the best designed movies, in my opinion, but it's not accurate at all. But this is something that I like for whatever reason. One of the things that it does is that it cre is that it cuts out a lot of decision making because everyone knows what the bar is. It's accuracy for the most part. I think that if I was going to be super strict, there was things that I would not have done but you need to have a little bit of variety in the look of things virtually no viking helmets from the period have been discovered like so you can't have everyone with literally the same exact helmet because that's the only one that's been discovered so you have to find a way to make an educated guesses about like different versions based around that they're inspired by the periods nearby that kind of thing was there anything that was surprising or unexpected you learned about the nordic culture well something that's not in the film is how they're like incredibly litigious. Uh, we we um, set our our period uh, in the be sort of the beginning of the Icelandic settlements before the All Thing, which is their uh, like sort of parliament uh, was formed, and it was a little bit more like the Wild West and a little bit more lawless. But as things developed, you know, if I killed your brother, you would have to kill my brother because that's just just sure yeah it makes but sense. as we're trying to like you know get our farms together and like and export sales and export falcons and whatever viking boring crap it's kind of like how about this i killed your brother but i'll give you like 30 golden arm rings and then let's just like call it off how's that you know and there was and so there was like you know viking lawyers who were helping to sort all that out yeah. that's not in the movie that was something that was interesting yeah that's 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 a different movie but one that could it's also be pretty cool viking yeah. like a like, that would be a great spin-off sort of procedural series but viking lawyer viking lawyer yeah. actually one of, another great saga is uh, is Njal's saga and he is a lawyer <laughs> uh, but he's a lawyer with sort of uh, supernatural psychic powers. Uh, and then he, one of his best buds is like a strapping blonde Alexander Skarsgård, like kick-ass warrior. How did you um, sort of blend those two together in terms of like how you represented the supernatural in this film with a more grounded sort of historical, uh, historically accurate approach? We show some supernatural beings in a way that earlier in my career, I would have said is kind of distasteful. Maybe it still is distasteful. Uh, maybe it's better to leave that stuff to the imagination. But if you're making a movie at this scale that's intended for a broader audience, like you need to show this stuff so it can be clear. This isn't an indie movie that's meant to keep people at arm's length. So if Vikings believe in Valkyries, we're gonna have Valkyries. Whatever was in the mindscape of the Viking age, we tried to, 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 to realize that. 
um, in, in a grounded way. I want to talk about uh, Anya Taylor-Joy's character of, of Olga and whether or not uh, she's a good witch or a bad witch, frankly. And just sort of the idea that uh, that witches can be kind of serious in that culture and, and, and very powerful. So, like, can you talk about her character and what she can do? <laughs> I fear that everyone's going to be, like, you know, disappointed that she's not, like, Storm from X-Men or something. Because it, <laughs> it is, you know... Her, her her character is a little more subtle than all that. Let's take a look at some of the images that we that we've got here. This is Alexander Skarsgård as Amleth here, correct? We all have probably heard of berserkers, but there's another kind who, who were Viking warriors that went into like berserk rages of fury, but they were often the king's bodyguards and very elite warriors. And berserker means bear shirt. Is does it mean? bear shirt or bear shirt like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so we have them in a state of almost entire undress and it seems like nudity was likely something that wasn't common in the viking age like people weren't walking around naked but and it was something that was considered quite threatening Talking about him, him being the warrior here. Let's, this is uh, on top of being a much bigger film. There's, there's action. There's a lot of action, uh, which, yeah, like which action. is a, yeah. So, I mean, can you talk about directing the action sequences? It was fun. It was really difficult, um, especially because we shoot the film. Scenes are generally one and shot or one to three shots, uh, long shots that are very choreographed. So, so that's you know, it's a big challenge. Um, but it's an exciting one. And and it, what was fun was working with the stunt coordinator, C.C. Smith, and realizing that, you know, that the stunt coordinator becomes another authorial voice. Each beat of the fight for most of the action sequences was written in the script. But then realizing that foreground action and saying like, well, well, actually, if you're jumping off of a horse like this, it's really going to do that. And, you know, and so then and all these things have to be considered. And then and then there's the layers of action. It got to the point where there were some scenes, not necessarily action scenes, that were going to have a little more coverage, but I got so used to the adrenaline of like white knuckling the monster. <laughs> we're gonna get the take that I just yeah. like couldn't shoot it any other way by the end. Yeah, let's look at the next image here. This is Fjolnir. That is Clay's recreation of a Viking Age helmet with a, a little bit of our own decoration, but this is the most accurate Viking helmet in the movie. He's wearing a Vera Felder cloak that was often called the Chewbacca cloak, but it, <laughs> it's like long strands of cheap hair. And it's a very, very time consuming thing to make. Going on to the third image here, I want to talk about this sort of mummified head that's happening here. Odin, uh, kept the head of Mimir and the head was preserved with herbs and could tell Odin stuff he needed to know. And so we have a scene that's inspired by that. And then it's also important to note that this sorcerer, he witch, is wearing that boss brooch, something that only a woman would wear. Certain kinds of magic was something that was for women and many of the male practitioners of this magic were sort of outliers in, in the community and like, might be considered queer in today's nomenclatures. So then moving on to the uh, final image here, we've got uh, Ethan Hawke. Man, what a badass. When I first talked with Ethan about this, because I had seen Ethan do Shakespeare on stage, and I was like, we both know this is your wheelhouse, but audiences aren't going to necessarily expect it. If nothing else, this this movie has already got like some serious beard envy like uh, <laughs> brewing in me. Um, so let, let's talk again, let's dip, dip back into some more of the inspiration. Obviously, like there's so much from, from the Viking culture that you're, that you're pulling from. Um, but so some of our other, some of our fan questions include some things about, uh, film inspirations. Miklos Yancho's cinema of long meandering takes and Tarkovsky's Andrei Rublyov was a major influence. Let me be clear that this movie's not anywhere near that good, and Tarkovsky would hate this movie like with every ounce of his Russian soul. Um, Conan I mean, the Barbarian. I, I, <laughs> I watched Conan 
way too many times, way too young. And the cut doesn't happen in the film the way that it does in the trailer. But in the trailer, there's like the kid rowing to Alex rowing. That is like exact quote of like Conan and the Wheel of Pain, you know? That robot's got real Wheel of Pain vibes. There's another question from the username is, uh, is just B-I-C. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Make a refined ballpoint pens. Yes, exactly. Are you a guy that makes playlists when you're writing or developing? Because he wants to know if you listened to any folk or Viking metal during prep. It's such a long playlist that I like broke my composer's computer. This genre of like neo folk Viking inspired music has very, for the most part, aside from some of the instruments, has very little to do with what Viking Age music probably actually was. Right. Uh, but yeah. I didn't really listen to a lot of metal growing up, but the Northmen was so stressful that I listened to so much metal in the make this film and like post-production. I gotta say the score is really pretty cool. Right. And I, and by, by the way, I don't need to hear the score like ever again. Like, you know, like I don't want to see this movie. I'm so <laughs> sick of it all. Um, but they're working on the original soundtrack re release, like the digital and vinyl. And uh, and I listened to the mastered final fight. Ooh, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. That's great. Robert, thank you so much for being here. Is there, is there anything else you want to add about, about the film? Anything else uh, that you want to point out to, that we should be looking forward to? I hope this brave experiment worked. Thank you so much for being here. Really looking forward to it. Northman is out uh, in the States here April 22nd.